It was the 8th of March, 2018. A Thursday. 22-year-old Haley Anderson was up late, playing board games and drinking with her roommates. They finished just before 4 a.m. and went to bed. They were all students at Binghamton University in Binghamton, New York, and were in their final year, and were looking forward to graduation. Haley was in their nursing program and she had a job lined up in an emergency department in Long Island. While attending Binghamton University, she worked at Jazzman's, an on-campus coffee shop, for over three years. She planned to graduate in May 2018. Friends described Anderson as hard-working, friendly and compassionate, with a love of music. When Haley's roommate, Josie Arden, woke after a few hours of sleep, she noticed that Haley wasn't in bed. That didn't cause an alarm. They were college students and were all independent and did their own thing. But later that night, she got concerned. Haley was supposed to meet Josie and other friends at a bar, but didn't show up, which wasn't like her at all. Josie noticed that she didn't post anything on any of her social media channels all day either. When she called her on her cell phone there was no answer, and none of the text messages that her friends sent were responded to. Josie, along with another roommate, tracked Haley's iPhone, using the app, Find My Friends. Haley's cell phone was at a house on Oak Street. Orlando Tercero lived there. Orlando was in a nursing program too, and he and Haley dated briefly on and off, for a little over a year. Orlando was born in Miami and grew up in Nicaragua, before returning to the United States to study. He was a good student and studied during the week, and he liked to party when he had time off. Haley always made it really clear to Orlando, that she didn't want to be in a committed relationship, but, that she enjoyed hanging out with him. Haley was also on and off with her ex-boyfriend, Kevin. This made Orlando furious, and Haley's family and roommate, Josie, said Orlando was obsessed with her. Orlando holds dual Nicaraguan and American citizenship, and his full name is Orlando Enrique Tercero Moreno. Tercero was suspected of slashing Anderson's car's tires on September 16, 2017, causing about $600 in damage. The police report included some details about Tercero and Anderson's relationship, they had previously dated for a short period of time. Additionally, on September 15, 2017, Anderson attended a party at Tercero's residence where he confronted her about her new relationship with a mutual friend. According to the police report, the party confrontation went as follows, Tercero shouted at Anderson then offered her alcohol in an attempt to smooth things over. Anderson declined to press charges over the tire slashing incident. Josie and another roommate Michelle Topoli went to Oak Street to see if Haley was there at Orlando's. Her friends went over there and climbed through a window after Orlando didn't answer the door. They walked into Orlando's room and found Haley dead. They called 911. The police arrived at Orlando's apartment. Haley was found laying on Orlando's bed, she had bruises on her neck and arms. Police needed to find out what happened after Haley finished drinking and playing board games with friends. How did she end up at Orlando's house? They knew there were a number of surveillance cameras in the area, and outside the house where Orlando lived. They viewed them and observed that Haley and Orlando entered his house together. Haley seemed fine at that time and seemed to go into the house willingly. A few hours later, the footage revealed that Orlando left the house alone and cleared out his garbage. He then went to a local pharmacy, purchased two sleeping aids, z and Melatoni, and then went back to the house. The footage showed that he left again seven hours later 
and walked down to the basement of the house. Police believe that at that point, Orlando tried to take his own life in the basement. They found hooks and a rope. They figured that he fell and hurt himself instead. There was blood on the floor in the basement. They found what they believe was a suicide note, written in Spanish and the English translation read. I'm really sorry about this. I never felt I could be capable of doing this. Father, I'll see you soon. Orlando's father had passed away five years earlier. They believe the note was not just a suicide note but a confession too. The final time he leaves the house, is seven hours later with luggage. Orlando had driven to JFK airport and went home to Nicaragua. He is seen on camera from the airport with his head wrapped. On March 9th, Orlando arrived in Nicaragua around 4 p.m. His mom picked him up from the airport, and they drove three hours to their hometown. On Sunday, March 11th, Terchero was officially named as a suspect by the Binghamton Police Department, which also stated that Terchero fled to Nicaragua. The Broome County District Attorney, Steve Cornwell, said his office will be seeking an indictment from a grand jury in the case, and after one is granted, will file a warrant for Terchero's arrest. According to Cornwell, the warrant will be presented to the U.S. Department of State, and his office will call on the Nicaraguan government to extradite Terchero. Monday, classes were cancelled for senior nursing students in the wake of Anderson's death. Also on Monday, March 12th, University President Harvey Stender and Decker School of Nursing Dean Mario Ortiz released statements mourning Anderson's death and extending condolences to her friends and family. On March 13th, Orlando's mom took him to the hospital to get treated for his injuries. And Terchero was apprehended by the Nicaraguan National Police on Tuesday, March 13th at the Hospital de Leon. He had entered the country on Friday, March 9th at 3.55 p.m. Being that Terchero attempted suicide after killing Anderson, he was placed in a psychiatric hospital upon arrival in Nicaragua. After Terchero was arrested at the hospital, he was taken to the Directorate of Judicial Assistance also known as El Chipote, in Managua. In Broome County on March 17, Terchero was charged with second-degree murder, which meant he could face up to life in prison if convicted. The Broome County District Attorney also officially released a warrant for Terchero's arrest. Additionally, District Attorney Cornwell publicly released the information that Anderson's roommates initially found her unresponsive in Terchero's Oak Street apartment. They were concerned about Anderson and searched for her. Once they found her, they called 911 which triggered the police's welfare check and investigation. The police in the U.S. wanted Orlando to be extradited back to New York for the trial, but it was denied. Orlando's trial finally began on September 1, 2019. The trial in Nicaragua was in Spanish, and there was a video link so that the family and friends of Haley could see and hear what was happening. They had an interpreter because Haley's mom, Karen, and her roommate, Josie, testified. Orlando was now being charged with femicide, a charge that we don't have in the United States. Femicide is the murder of a woman who is in a relationship with a defendant. The prosecution's theory was that Orlando killed Haley in a jealous rage, basically if I can't have you, no one can. Orlando's defense said Orlando was temporarily insane at the time of the murder. They said he and Haley had been drinking heavily that night, and he didn't remember what happened. There was no evidence that Orlando was that intoxicated or on any drugs. After both sides gave their case, the judge said she would decide on her verdict after a brief recess. This shocked many, because usually in the US if the trial is decided by a judge, the judge takes several days to look over the evidence and decide on their verdict. This judge decided in 90 minutes. Orlando Tercero was found guilty of femicide and was given the maximum sentence, 30 years in a Nicaraguan prison. 
On February 4, 2020, Orlando was back in court to appeal his conviction. His defense had also requested that Orlando should have another psychological evaluation done and that he was insane during the murder. On March 10, 2020, almost two years to the day of the murder, the appeal was denied. However, he was given another psychological evaluation. If Orlando ever gets out of prison, and steps foot in the US, he could be tried in New York for the murder because of extradition laws. Gordon Anderson, Haley's dad, said this of his daughter. Haley was a kind, compassionate person who always saw the good in people, which is what made her want to pursue nursing, so she could help others. She was someone who would have made a huge difference in this world. We're certainly satisfied with the verdict and the sentencing phase is yet to come. That will be determined, uh, the date will be determined uh, after, in conjunction with the Embassy in Nicaragua and the Department of Justice and our office. So we will deal with that sentencing later, but based upon this law of femicide, the defendant will spend a minimum of 25 years in prison and a maximum of 30 years. So we will wait to find out exactly uh, what that sentence is, but today uh, justice was served as much as it ever can be in cases like this. And these are two of the strongest parents um, that you will ever meet in some of the finest people you will ever meet, which obviously um, was exactly what their daughter Haley was about, according to everybody who uh, has m spoken about her or met her. And we want to thank everybody for uh, their cooperation, and uh, we're going to continue to do everything that we can uh, to assist the Nicaraguan authorities and to help uh, the family and friends of Haley. I would really like to thank Steve Cornwell. As well. It was amazing. Um, when this all started, I was, I just kept my faith in the system, and keeping my faith in the system proved to be the right thing to do. Um, he has worked relentlessly on helping us with this, with this case. Um, the disappointment when Haley wasn't going to be extradited was overwhelming for us as well as him. He, he took it to heart. But when they decided to have the trial in Nicaragua, he worked relentlessly to make sure that we could be participating in it, that he got everything together so it could actually pan out amazing. And having uh, the interpreters here, another room, so friends and family could all support us. And I can't thank Steve his staff, Mina and Leah, the interpreter here, and the investigators, Jack Collins and, and many of the other, and the witnesses here, I, I, I thank them so much to see that the justice has been done without them. And I'm so glad that it happened while he's still here. <laughs> so thank you, Steve. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to thank, to thank Steve as well. Um, <laughs> It was um, a little overwhelming when it first happened. Um, of course, no one's ready for any of this. Uh, everyone's a little uncertain if anything's going to pan out and if it's going to come together, if it's going to work out. And then when we heard the news um, about not being able to be expedited and come back, uh, it really made everybody skeptical. Um, and you can see the emotion through Steve um, and his whole staff and everybody that's been a part of this case has really helped tremendously. Uh, set in our mind at ease. Um, I don't know if there's ever a word for justice because there's no justice for something that's truly, for lack of words, um, disheartening as, as this was. Um, it was. It was a great loss and she was a bubble in a sunshiny day. She just made you smile. Hmm. And she'll be truly missed. And um, the way it worked out, being able to come up here and 
and relax with our friends and, and sit in the office and get a view, there was some ease to the heartache. Um, and a little bit of conclusion. I mean, it's not over and there will always be an emptiness that's there. But it was, um, it was nice to see that Nicaragua did a really professional bang up job and get the job done. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy these videos, drop a like in there too. Thanks for watching. And if you would like to see a certain video on something, leave it in a comment below. Until next time, stay safe.